Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this session is upstream CI CD tools for your cloud uh, production cloud. Uh, we are operating one oh, 1,000 more test units every day at upstream development. And these tools are, uh, there is a lot of tools for operating that. It is great if these tools are used for product, production cloud also. And we are trying to find some way, some nice way to use these tools. OK, uh, let's start the, this session. At the first, uh, we'd like to introduce ourselves. Masaki, please. OK, thanks. Um, my name is Masayuki Igawa uh, from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And uh, I'm a core member of some several QA projects, uh, such as uh, Tempest, uh, OpenStack Health, and uh, Subnet Seco, etc. Thanks. The next is. Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Ghansiam Man from NEC. I'm core in Tempest, and uh, I'm working in upstream QA development and make sure all the stability of uh, upstream code and the test case is all we can use in uh, production environment also. So next, please. Yep. Uh, hi, I'm Ken Omichi from NEC. I am a QA project PTR and, oh. <laughs> and uh, I am a core reviewer of uh, uh, NOVA. Um, OK. Uh, here is today's agenda. Uh, at the first, we'd like to explain introduction and the next uh, overview of QA tools and how to use Q these QA tools for production environment. And the next, uh, we'd like to explain what is the next works. And if uh, there is available time, we'd like to operate some demonstration. So uh, this is the introduction. So, uh, we are working for OpenStack quality at upstream development at the QA member. Uh, we are all QA project member, and uh, there are a lot of tools for testing and debugging for the quality. Sometimes we need to uh, investigate uh, bugs at the upstream development, and uh, maybe uh, we hope uh, we, we, you, you audience will learn how to keep improve uh, this quality at upstream development and how to use these tools for your production environment. So what is uh, QA in OpenStack? Uh, this is a mission state, mission state of QA project. So we are uh, we are out of, uh, uh, we are implement a lot of features at upstream development, and we need to keep this quality every time, every day. And uh, op as an OpenStack, we need to release this OpenStack component every time, even if that is the middle of development cycle. So we need to keep this quality. Every day, every day. So this is an overview of get test. That means upstream development test tool. So uh, if developer want to uh, want to post uh, patches, which means uh, sometimes they want to fix a bug, or sometimes they want to add a new feature, and uh, if uh, they they are post a patch. Uh, uh, it, this, these tests are run automatically against uh, these patches. So one test is uh, code style test, that is a pep weight, and the unit test is Python 2, 20, 23, uh, 34, and the integration test is get test DSVM. So uh, as I said, uh, 1,000 more get test cycle runs in most working day. Each get test cycle contains uh, 1,000 more tests. That means uh, 1 million tests runs in every day. 
uh, this is the overview of upstream CI/CD system. Uh, so left, uh, uh, right side, right side, uh, right side. Uh, if developer want to post a patch, uh, uh, the patch is uploaded to get it and uh, uh, get it kicks. Uh, Jenkins kicked it, and uh, as a third, uh, Jenkins allocated to virtual machine from node pool. After that, Jenkins kick uh, DevStack gate, and DevStack gate configured virtual uh, machine. And after that, uh, DevStack deploys uh, OpenStack environment with proposed patches. After that, uh, Tempest uh, Tempest is played a lot of tests against this deployed OpenStack environment. All tests are finished. Uh, all uh, results and logs is uh, stored into logs. So after that, developer can see result and logs on the get it. That is the over, uh, overview. So. Uh, as a, on the next, uh, Masaki will explain overview of OpenStack tools, please. Thanks. So I will explain about the overview of QA tools. So here is uh, QA tools. Uh, we are using it in QA. So uh, we have and uh, developing uh, several tools uh, for testing like Tempest, OSTSR, and the Grenade, Bashhead, etc. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a, uh, OpenStack specific tools also. So that uh, they are OpenStack Health, Subnet SQL, and Elastic Recheck, DevStack, etc. And the third one is generic tool. This is these are not uh, OpenStack specific, but uh, we are using it, uh, them for checking or deb debugging our gate or testing. Th they are Elastic Recheck, uh, sorry, Elastic Search, uh, Logstash, Kibana, and uh, Gerrit Jenkins, etc. So, uh, in this session, uh, we will focus on these three tools, th uh, they are Tempest and uh, OpenStack Health and uh, uh, Kibana. So uh, this graph shows uh, user and uh, these tools relationship. So users or operators can run tests through the Tempest and see the results through the OpenStack Health dashboard and uh, if they are something wrong, uh, we need to debug for that. So we are using uh, Kibana dashboard. So today we'd like to talk about the three things, three tools. Uh, we'd like to uh, explain about more later. Okay. So first we'll cover like Tempest. So Tempest is OpenStack integration test suite, and it's an integration uh, test to run against each OpenStack cluster. So it's not just uh, in the gate, or it's not just for the upstream testing and the code stability, it's more on the production environment also. So we have a majority of test cases like API scenarios and integration, and those test cases can be run through Tempest completely on your production environment. And uh, Tempest is designed for, you, uh, for a large number of di different environments, like you have thousands of nodes running on your cloud, and you may want to make sure the stability of those, so Tempest can give you the results. OK, these, day, these are the performance of these features or services. These are the failures and the uh, success cases. So you can analyze how your production environment is going. And these are the test type we have in Tempest. So first is API test we have. So those API test uh, does the validation for the OpenStack APIs. 
So basically, they calls the they makes the API, API HTTP request through a Tempest service clients. They goes to the each services, get the response, and then we validate those response code is in the expected range or the response attributes fields are corrected or not. And in some cases, like for compute service, we have the JSON schemas, so which validate each response type, attribute, additional property, etc. So everything that makes sure the backward compatibility of APIs. So if any project accidentally some changes have, are proposed, like status code is being changed or type of the attribute is changed, so as the tempest is running on gate, so we can capture before merging the code. Okay, this is the this is how you are breaking the backward compatibility. This change should not go in, so we can capture immediately through API test. And next uh, we have the scenario test. So those are like more uh, complex through the path. Like we have the cross project functionality to test like how NOAA interact with Neutron, how NOAA interact with Cinder get the volume, attach the volume, and everything is working fine or not. So we have different, different scenarios for each services in scenario test. And with it, for single service also, we have the complex scenarios, like creating the VM with security groups, key pairs, checking the network connectivity between those. So those complex things comes into the scenario test. And third we have currently is stress test, but those are deprecated. So what test test was like, uh, they were designed to test the open stack environment for high workload. So we have the some script like uh, putting the high workload, like creating the 100 of the VM, creating 50 volumes, attaching and all. So those are deprecated because uh, that was not the original scope of Tempest. So what we are doing, we are deprecating those and will be removed in Newton, but we will be providing those in the separate repo with the runnable script. So if anyone want to run, so they can run uh, from the separate repo. And if that is much needed and useful, maybe we can make that repo as an open stack repo, which will go under the QA. And uh, next one is the external plugin. So we have the big, big tent architecture now in open stack. So we have a lot of project growing up. So we have the six core project, NOAA, Neutron, Keystone, Glance, Swift, and other around 30, 40 projects we have. So it was impossible to cover each project test case in Tempest, in terms of implementation also, in terms of maintainability also. So it was, uh, uh, sorry. So it is important uh, to provide some external interface so that they can have the test case and Tempest can run. It's same like how DevStack uh, plugin and Granite plugin works. So Tempest provides the external plugin interface, each project or in any separate repo, they can implement the Tempest-like test. We have the interfaces for temp implementing the Tempest-like test. And uh, then once you have implemented, you can run through Tempest. So from user point of view, how to run the test case, they cannot see where the test case lives, in project or in Tempest tree. So they can run, run in the similar fashion. So it's just the ownership of the test case we can move to the each project in different repos through external plugin. So, and that's uh, pretty much working. We have around 30 plugins uh, currently. So, like uh, Congress, Manila, Mistral, they have all Tempest test cases in their tree. And uh, on the gate job, we just install their plugin and run through the Tempest so they can get the, their test case results. And, uh, but that needs to be extended more, like for CM commands, tools, and all. We will keep extending the plugin so that each project can have all the abilities to put the plugins in Tempest, either through command lines, test cases, or whatever. Yeah. So next, uh, Masuki will explain about the OpenStack Health. OK. So I will explain about uh, OpenStack Health. So First, do you know OpenStack Health? So if you use it or know it, please raise your hands. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, uh, I need to talk about uh, OpenStack Health. That's good things. So OpenStack Health is now heavily under the development phase. So OpenStack Health is 
it is the dashboard for visualizing, visualizing test results of OpenStack share jobs. So um, we are improving it every week, every day, and uh, we deploy it every single patch. So you can use it uh, through the latest one uh, uh, on the status OpenStack of slash OpenStack dash health. Yeah, if you like it or interested in, you can use it. So, what is the uh, OpenStack Health? So, why do we need this? So, uh, OpenStack is under the uh, big tents, so there are a lot of projects. So, the, there are, that means that there are a lot of test results, job, job results. So, we, it's very difficult to uh, recognize the trends or uh, summary of the project status. And uh, uh, more thing is notifying method. Uh, mailing list, oops. Mailing list is, uh, doesn't work because nobody care about it. So the OpenStack Health shows the visualizing uh, graph that means a uh, very good mm, viewing for that. So features, uh, we are providing a dashboard that is graphs, uh, colorful tables for analyzing uh, our big data. So, and uh, technically, the OpenStack Health uh, architecture is very simple right now. Uh, that consists from AngularJS, now version one, and the plus uh, uh, D3, we are using the NV D3 uh, library for uh, uh, drawing the graphs, and uh, we are using uh, Flask as a, for API server. And the backends, as a backends, we are using Subnet SQL API and the database, we are storing uh, data. We support uh, MySQL, SQLite, PostgreSQL, like that. Oh. <laughs> uh, so recent topic, uh, there are several, we are currently uh, heavily development phase, so there are a lot of things is changing now. So context color table means uh, uh, yeah, like, like this, yeah, red and uh, orange, blue, green means uh, show the status of uh, failure percentage. And the RSS feed uh, here, uh, uh, sending uh, alternative of uh, notification. The third one is, uh, we can find it, that, that is uh, graphs. Uh, before that, we use a pie chart, but uh, that is very uh, cost, uh, not effective uh, space. So we are using now the bar graph for that. So the next one topic is reject search filter. We can specify uh, filter for uh, rejects. Like uh, you want to some project, you can uh, specify in the Nova, Pipe, Glass, Pipe, Cinder, etc. And the next one is uh, paging, pagination. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, test results. This showing the uh, over two twenty thousand. Uh, test results, so we cannot uh, display that, showing that in one page, so the pagination is uh, uh, the, for the, as a solution for that. So I'll talk about uh, data flow. So 
first, uh, subunit three is come from uh, tempest test result or unit test result that's kicked by a Gearman worker. That's through the, sorry, uh, subunit SQL API, store the database, and the user uh, access to the dashboard, the open Success API server uh, querying the subunit SQL API, that's data comes from the database that's showing the user. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to talk about Kibana uh, here. And uh, Kibana Elastic Recheck Logstash is log management system. And this is not OpenStack specific, very generic thing. And uh, we are using this uh, system as a log management system. Uh, we are for searching similar cases to debug get problem or bugs. Uh, I'd like to sh sh explain uh, over, uh, ov uh, overview here. And uh, if, uh, as uh, Masaki said, uh, they, there is a similar sequence to store logs. Uh, Gearman worker uh, fetch logs of the gate test and uh, send these logs to Logstash. And Logstash, uh, Logstash filter unnecessary logs, logs out and uh, convert into useful format. And uh, uh, the de data is stored into Elastic Recheck with indexing and uh, debugger. Ah, uh, 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 right side, right side rebacker such uh, similar cases on the website, and uh, uh, Kibana Kibana searches logs from Elastic Recheck. That is a overview. So, uh, how to use QA tools for production? That is the main topic. And please uh, introduce uh, Tempest thing. Yeah. So, as we know, like on gate. Okay, we check the upstream stability, that is fine, but on production environment, it's more important, like something we can have integrated and that can provide the stability of production environment. And if something goes down or up, they can immediately tell, okay, you are wrong here, these tests are failing, this feature not working right, so you can immediately take action. So that's what uh, we have these tool, like first for Tempest, so we'll cover how you can set up the Tempest and how you can configure different different services and then you can run those. So there are two ways to set the Tempest. The first is Tempest as a system install program that you do via pip install. And second, from source code, you can try, but that is not recommended. It means that's the legacy way. The first one is pretty easy. So that's how we do. So we just clone from the URL the Tempest clone we did, and just run the pip install Tempest less. And it will install the Tempest. It will create the directory slash etc Tempest, or as per your distribution, maybe some prefix slash etc Tempest, like user slash etc Tempest, or user local slash etc Tempest. So this directory it will set up. And under this uh, directory, you can have the your configuration, tempest.conf, which we'll talk later. And uh, these are the global directory you have installed. And now you can work on the different, different sub-working directories to run the different configuration of your cloud separately. That's how you do with the tempest init command. So these tempest init, and uh, you give the directory name. So idea here is it set up the separate working directory. You have all the configuration setting there. And from there, you can run the test cases. Then you can have the separate, another directory where you want to have the different configuration. And you can run the sep uh, test cases separately there. So another use case is like you have two cloud, which are running different, different services with different, different configuration. 
like one has the with hypervisor provide the resize of VM uh, VM resize feature. Another you have with container which doesn't allow you to resize the VM. So those are the configuration you can vary between these two subdirectory, and based on those configuration, those test cases will be run through separate directory. Test results will be separated. So if you see these, if you init the direct subdirectory, it creates the etc directory log test repository logs, everything is separate. So when you run the test case, your re test results and everything are separate. You can check the results and all. And under the etc directory, it will copy all the files you had previously created global etc tempest directory. So those will be like any tempest.conf, uh, Oslo config generator where you generate the sample tempest configuration file, account YML file where you can predefine the credentials which you want to use for your test running and everything. And uh, another thing no to note here is like you have a tempest conf and between multiple cloud if you want to test, so 70, 80 or maybe 50% of the configurations are same. So you don't want to go each subdirectory and write all the configuration again and again. So what you have, you put that uh, common in, uh, config operation in this global ETC tempest. And when you do the tempest in it, that tempest config will be copied to each subdirectory ETC file, which have the common configuration option. And then you add or modify configuration option, which are specific to your cloud, which you are testing under any subdirectory. So that's how you can have the isolation between the Tempest test with different, different configuration for single cloud or multiple cloud. And this is the next or legacy way we have that's just from the Tempest source code repo. So you have the git clone with URL. Uh, that's not much visible, sorry. And then you just cd tempest, and then you'll have these much directory where you have the etc also. And uh, under etc, you can have tempest.conf, which you can modify and then run. This is the legacy way, so we don't recommend this way, because it doesn't provide you the different, different uh, set of working directory, or differently you can test the different clouds with different configuration. So first one was recommended. And uh, another thing I forgot to mention, so under etc file, you have to put the tempest.conf, because that is the location tempest recognize. So when you do the tempest in it, if we have time, we see the demo, it will create you the tempest.conf sample file, which we, we have the, all the defaults file and the help message for each, where you modify the, uh, each, each config option. So tempest conf.sample, you can rename it to tempest.conf, and then you can do the whole modification. Yeah, and now how, and the main, actually, pain point for that is setting up the configuration file. So we have around 80 configuration options. That is just Tempest plus six core projects and a big tent. And we have additional for other project test case, like uh, whatever plugin, Tempest plugin they have, so they have their own configuration. So in Tempest and the six core project, we have the 80 configurations, which are good, but still not good. 80 are a very huge number. But we had around 200 or 300 configuration option, which was around impossible to use Tempest under production environment. So we have down with them with 80 configuration options, which I think is not much hard. and. Uh, Another thing is to generate the sample file with default values where you get the ideas, OK, these are the configuration options, these are the default value, these are the help messages, and I can, OK, we can modify, oh, these are the configuration, I don't need default values, I can modify, and other let it run with default values. So you can generate the configuration file with talks, hyphen each, and config, or we have this Oslo config generator so you just mentioned the config file which we have under Tempest, that what all configuration registered under Tempest conf namespace, that Oslo will generate a sample config file and give you the output. So either way, you can have the sample file, then just open it, modify it. And 
Another best reference for Tempest Conf is the DevStack one. So on Gate, DevStack set up each Tempest Config. Uh, on Gate, uh, we are running huge test case, and every project we have a lot of uh, Gate job. And with different, different configuration, like with MySQL, Postgres, and with Neutron or NOAA network, or uh, like very different configuration. So DevStack set up the Tempest Conf when you just stack .ss the dev stack. So there we have the examples. OK, these are the configuration option, what value you should have. And that is the best reference. You have the dev stack installed, running on gate job. Just pick the tempest.conf and just use that as a reference, which actually is pretty helpful to setting up the tempest conf. And these are the minimum configuration what we need to run the test case. First is the auth configuration. Because as we said, like API test or in scenario test, we do make the HTTP request on API on each services where we need the keystone token to validate that. So these are the configuration where you can set up from which we get the uh, token from keystone. First is the test account file. So that is the way where you create the credential and you mention those credentials in test account file. And Tempest will use those credentials to run the test case. That can be one or more than one. Depends on the concurrency where you run the test case. The suggestion the recommended is uh, the double of the concurrency you have. So you can have 10 cre uh, credentials mentioned in the Tempest config with different roles. And uh, test cases with you will use those to get the token and make the request and all. That is the one way. You don't need to do anything. Just uh, create the keystone credentials, mention in the file. That's it. Another way is use the dynamic credential. That is the option, use dynamic credential. Uh, U is small, actually, came capital. So you make this true. What it means, it tells Tempest, OK, uh, you want to use the dynamic credential. You go and create the credential for me and use that in your test case. Depends on whether I want to run in parallel or se serial. If you mention the dynamic credential is equal to true, so we have to provide the admin credentials. With help of those, Tempest create the credentials for each test case dynamically and clear those credentials once the test goes out. So we need the admin username, project name, or you can say tenant name it was, or pass, admin password, domain name, and uh, isolated network, whether you want or not or credential domain name, like for Keystone v3 API and all, what default we use. So those you can mention, and you can run with the dynamic credentials. And you need the URI for Keystone. So we need the endpoint first to get the token, which is the URI for v2 API, URI underscore v3. You can mention v3 API URI if you, want, if you are using Keystone v3. Then auth version, catalog type, reason. These are the. Uh, Options, we need to know, OK, where is the keystone or identity service is running? So all the endpoints information we use, OK, which endpoint type you want to give, what is the catalog type under which your identity service is installed, and the, obviously the URI. Those are the minimum configuration we, we need for uh, getting the token, making the request. And now next comes configuration options per services. So each services like NOAA, Cinder, Volume, they have set of configuration which you want to run with different, different way. First is to get the endpoints for these services. For them, we need the catalog type, <coughs> reason, and the endpoint, endpoint type you want to use. By default, like endpoint type is public, so we make request on public endpoint. And from there, we get okay, the services are running here, we can make the request there. And others are like specific to services like API extension. Many projects have the extension, like you can enable or disable the servi uh, service features with extension. NOAA had, but we had already deprecated those, so it's all extension. But Still, you can mention the API extension in case of like Neutron, 
you have the list of extension. So you know, OK, this is my cloud. These are the extension I have enabled. So mention that list in this API extension. And only test cases for those extension will be run. And what all extension are disabled, which you have not mentioned in this API underscore and extension, those will be skipped automatically. It's not like, OK, my cloud has two extension and third I have not installed. And Tempest, if you run for the third extension test, it will fail. No. We have the option. You mention your cloud configuration, and it will skip automatically. Next, like image reference, which image you want to use to creating the VMs for test case, flavor reference, or feature like resize, whether your hypervisor support resize, resizing of VM or not. If not, make it false, and test will skip. And others also, lot many. So those are configuration, actually, which you know, OK, you have the cloud, you are testing the cloud, you know the features, and it's not much hard to mention all these configuration or hard to understand, OK, what is the these configuration. And we have default values for many of them. We have a good help message which explain, OK, what is this? For example, for resize, we have help message like, OK, this is the resize feature is enabled in your hypervisor, and this should be the same for NOAA hypervisor. So OK, you know this enable. You have to enable it or disable it. So same we have for uh, Glance, uh, Neutron, Swift, same configuration we have. Those first three are the mandatory, but catalog type, reason, and endpoint type you need to mention. And other depends on the what default value is or what your cloud is, you can modify. So you have installed the Tempest. You have set up the config. That's all. So you all set to hit the cloud, whether it's stable, it's working fine or not. And this is just you run the test with tester. So there are multiple ways. With tester run, you can give the test path. If you want to run a single test, complete test path you can give. Second. We have the unique ID for each test case. You can mention the, the, that unique ID that never going to be changed. So that is uniquely identified for test case. So it will run only particular test case. You can mention the directory, like if you want to run all compute tests, so tempest.api.compute. So it will run all the test case under this directory. And we have even subdirectory under compute, like server, uh, key pair, flavors. So whatever test case only you want to run, you can do. And if you want to run all the Tempest test case, you can just run Tempest run. Or parallel, if you want to run parallel, you have with number of CPU you have where Tempest you are running. Or you can mention, or you can just remove the parallel, you will run serially. So this is how you just set up the, install the config, install the Tempest, set up the config as per your cloud, and then just run the test case. It will just store all the test results and everything. Yep. So next. Okay. So maybe one minute left. <laughs> yeah, in a hurry. Uh, Obstack Health basic installation. Installation. Uh, so sub set up. You need to set up a submit SQL and uh, store the database. Uh, and uh, after that, git clone the submit SQL and uh, set up the database. And uh, you need to submit to SQL command uh, that store the database from the submarine uh, stream. So, other thing, you must read uh, readme first. I recommend it. And uh, uh, after that, off stack health itself, git clone the, from the repository and uh, read uh, readme and the uh, API server set up through the pip install and the uh, front end uh, set up. That's uh, and uh, run in the production. Uh, API server itself is just uh, doing like things. Uh, and the uh, front end is just create uh, uh, JavaScript and the rest of the things. And uh, you need to copy and bring the build file to your environment. 
So we are mo almost running out of time, right? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, please. Uh, sorry. Uh, time has come, and uh, sorry. Uh, the quality of time management is bad. So that's all. <laughs> Thank you.